Hi all, Mike Smith here. I'm looking at uh, creating a menu function at the top of one of my web pages um, and I'm using Divi from Elegant Themes to do this. So I just want to show you a trick that um, I've uh, developed to make menus a little bit more user friendly. As you can see, I've got a fairly long web page here and, I'm, and I've got this um, made narrow so that I can simulate what happens on a mobile device because this is a uh, learning course which is designed for a mobile device. And what I want is for this menu to uh, just open up like this and um, allow me to navigate around my, my course and also sometimes to links within these pages. Okay, but the problem is, if I scroll down the page, my menu disappears. You see at the top there? What I'd really like is for that menu to stay fixed on the side here in the left margin of this page as a scroll and then when I click on it, it, uh, it opens uh, and behaves in this way. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so first let me demonstrate what I'd, the finished product, what I'd like to happen. As I scroll down this page, you can see my menu stays fixed in a position there in the top left. Now that, that could be sort of, um, you know, uh, some section down the page here or at the bottom, but I've just chosen to put it up in the top left. Um, and it follows my page so that as I'm scrolling down the page the menu stays visible. But when I open the menu, if I click on that, a couple of things happen. Firstly, that menu opens up as it did before, but the, the page reformats so that the menu is placed at the top of the page and the page scrolls to the top of the page as well. So let me just demonstrate that one more time. Okay, so as I scroll down the page, the menu stays visible. When I click it, the page scrolls to the top and the menu opens and I can use it. When it closes, it becomes a floating menu again. That's what that, um, that behavior is called, a floating menu. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is understand how, um, a little bit about how the page structure actually works and, and what is it about this element that um, holds it in position, whereas uh, normally, uh, in a page structure, the content floats, uh, sorry, scrolls with the page, and that's the normal behavior. So what is it about this that actually takes it out of that page document structure and kind of makes it independently positioned? Okay, and, and what that is, is a CSS attribute called position. And when the position is fixed, as it is here, um, that basically means, literally, the element stays where it is on the page independently of whatever else is happening on the page. Um, and um, so that's the property that we're going to play with. And we're going to change it between this value of fixed and the normal value, which is relative. So I've just changed that to relative. And as you can see, the menu is now um, scrolling with the page. So what we're going to do in this method is play with this CSS position attribute, change the value of that position attribute between relative and fixed. Okay, now in order for us to control the properties of a page element, like this menu, we need to be able to target it. And so, and, and Divi actually makes that quite easy. As you can see over here, I've given, well, this, this item here, this, this element called menu, has been given an ID called page top menu div. And we need to do that so that we can control its appearance and its behavior. Now in Divi, that's easy to do because whenever we uh, have a module like this, you can see um, these little lines allow us to have a look at its properties. And in the toggle menu, much like most other modules um, in Divi, if you scroll down a bit, you can um, allocate a, an ID and or a class to that. Now, I'm not going to go into the difference between classes and IDs, but essentially IDs are a unique identifier. So if we uh, put this text in this box and then, and then save, save this, um, uh, these settings, then basically what happens is that this element is given a unique name that we can target and, and alter the properties. And that's exactly what we want. So we want, we want that, that, um, uh, that name, that ID, 
to be allocated to that menu. So Divi allows us to do that pretty easily. Okay, so now we can target that, uh, that menu item. The next thing we need to do is have some way of detecting whether this has been clicked on. Um, and there, there are a number of, number of ways to do this, and in fact I'm going to use a couple of methods together. But there is one property that you may notice is changing over here. As I'm clicking on this menu, it's changing between this, ta uh, this, this class here, ETPB toggle open, and closed. Uh, close. So I can use that class detect here to tell whether this menu has been is in the open position or in the in the closed position, and I can use that to control its appearance. Um, the other thing that I need to um, um, look at as well is um, there is a difference between clicking on this menu and clicking on items inside the menu. As you can see, if I were to click on these items here, which is actually inside this element then I wouldn't want that to have the same effect as clicking on the title. So we need to be able to distinguish between clicking on the title um, and clicking on elements inside this menu here. So let's have a look at that. So the first part's pretty easy. Um, <coughs> and we can use uh, Divi's uh, easy to use ePanel general settings for this because at the bottom we can, we can set some custom CSS. So basically, I want the um, the menu div here, which is called page top menu div. Uh, by default, normally I want its position to be fixed, and that that keeps that um, that menu um, in that position on the left hand side of the page. And I can I can even play with the um, the position here. At the moment, it's um, right hard up against the left margin, but I could put it basically anywhere I want. Um, I've just decided that I'd like it in the top left corner. So normally then, the, its position would be fixed, uh, which is the same as floating, independently of the scroll of the rest of the page. When uh, it's in an open position, this rule takes effect. So uh, I've added this class, so page top menu div, when this class is also active, uh, open, then we change its position to relative, and I also make its width 85% so that it uh, goes across the screen. So really, this behavior is, is just a simple CSS, nothing too fancy there. Okay, so um, that's pretty easy to do. Okay, so we've got our menu behaving in the way that we want. It's uh, fixed uh, when it's in the closed position and when it's uh, in the open position, it's a relative position, so it's actually inside the scrollable document, and, and everything works fine. Um, but we have a bit of a problem, and, and let me demonstrate what that problem is. The whole point of having the menu in the fixed position is so that it's accessible. And as we scroll down the page, that menu does indeed remain accessible. We can see it, we can click on it. But watch what happens if I do click on it, if I have scrolled some distance down the page. So it goes wider and it appears to have disappeared, but it hasn't of course. What, it, what has actually happened is that it's, placed, it's been placed at the top of the screen, which is where we asked it to be placed. Uh, as you can see over here, it's actually normally meant to be at the top of the page. But the problem is, we have, um, we have this as a consequence of the, the fixed property now. It stays visible as we scroll, but as soon as we make it relative, it uh, flicks back up to the top of the page. So that's a, a usability issue. Um, if that happened um, to a user scrolling this page, browsing this page, click on that button and suddenly it disappears. They don't know what's happened. So we need to fix that. So we will. Okay, so now we can't fix this problem using just CSS. We actually need a programming language to do this. Basically what we need to do is tell the page to scroll to the top when somebody clicks on this word menu. Um, and so uh, it opens but then the last thing it does is actually scrolls to the top. That's what we need it to happen. Okay, and the way we do that is use a, a language called JavaScript uh, and we put that code into 
uh, sorry, into the footer of the document. So um, now I'm not going to go into the details of JavaScript and in fact if you look closely I'm actually using a JavaScript library called jQuery. You might need the help of a programmer to do this but the important thing is that it is possible to do and if you do have some um, uh, courage to try this yourself you can have a look at the text here it's almost English readable so um, basically what happens is that you can read from here if somebody clicks on the title the h5 the heading 5 that's the menu word up here nowhere else as I mentioned before we don't want this to happen when someone clicks on you know these these pull downs down here only when they click on this word which is the h5 title of that div so if someone was to click onto that then basically we what we want to do is scroll to the top of the page um, in a nice smooth fashion so this 600 is 600 milliseconds um, and jQuery takes care of a nice screw a nice nice smooth scroll into the top of the page so um, the idea is pretty simple but you do need a programming language to do it someone clicks on that scroll to the top and then finish so if I save this um, now you will see now I'm going to need to refresh this page because I've changed the body of the page okay so now we well let's just check the original behavior works as expected yes that's as expected now if we try this scrolling to uh, some distance down the page click on menu it scrolls to the top and alters the menu from fixed to relative so that's basically how we create a nice usable um, floating menu that behaves itself in a way that a user would expect. And there it is.